Welcome back. This is part two of our repair video for the Samsung 43 inch TV. I've got the repair kit in, the part I think I showed you before. It's a BN961610A repair kit, and this is to repair the X main board on the Samsung TV. So today the parts kit arrived to repair the Samsung with the defective parts on the X main board. The parts that need to be changed are Q402, 403, 404 and 405 which are these transistors are IGBTs. There's two of them there. Those are the other two there and U4010 uh, which is a little IC and it is it's that one right there. Yeah, that's the IC there. So this IC has to be changed and the four transistors. These are surface mount transistors and we're going to remove them using hot air from a heat gun and then just lift them off with the pliers. So we'll get the heat gun going, we're going to put it on low and we're just going to slowly heat the board up until the solder flows and then just lift the components off. We just want to gently heat the board, move the hot air in a circular type motion just to evenly heat the board and once the solder begins to flow, once we get the parts hot enough to flow the solder, we can just lift the parts off. You got to be careful not to knock off any of the other resistors that are around there. You gotta be careful you don't knock off some other parts. And then we just lift off those two parts. And then we can do the same for the other parts. That's how you remove the old parts. We're going to clean up the board and uh, prep the new parts to install. Just to show that the parts, these are transistors, are blown. If we take the meter in diode test mode, we can test these transistors out of the board. And these are the parts that are indeed shorted. The diodes that in video number one looked like the diodes were also blown because the diodes are connected across these transistors. If I look back at the board, the diodes that we're testing as shorted before are in fact not shorted. They're measuring current in one direction only. So these other diodes are fine. It was just these four transistors and the drive IC is going to be changed. So we have the four transistors here. We're going to uh, mount the transistors and then we'll change the IC and put the board back in the television. Now I can attach the transistors by conventional method just using an iron and solder. 
I don't need to use the heat gun to replace the transistors as I just need to solder the leads in place. And then solder the backs of them down. Heat them up and push them down onto the board. And repeat for all four transistors. Just place the transistor on the board. Solder down the emitter and base and then heat the back of the collector up. When it gets up to melting temperature, solder will flow under it. And then just take the part and just push it flush with the board. To get a good connection like that. We'll do the same with the other two. As you can see, there's our four transistors replaced. Now we're going to go and change this IC over here. It's IC, was it 40, 4010, I think is the number. What's it say here? It lists it as IC40 or U4010. So we'll just zoom the camera in here, and that is that one right there. U4010. We're going to change that one by more conventional means. I'm not going to necessarily need the heat gun on that. I'm just going to use my uh, pick and my iron, and we're going to pick the leaves off. Heat them up one at a time and lift them. That's the easiest way to take these ones out. Try and uh, show this off as, as best I can. We got solder all the leads on one side. I know it's hard to see on camera because, well, I got to get my hand in here to work on this thing and I got to see what I'm doing, so. Okay, that should have all the leads unsoldered. I should be able to just pop the old IC. They typically glue these things down, so I just picked the pins off, and uh, I should be able to just twist the IC slightly, and it should come off the board like that. Now I clean up the solder pads, and we'll put some more flux on there, and we can set the new part in place. So now we've cleaned up the board. Time to reflux the board, making sure that there's nothing here that's going to cause a problem. We're going to put a bit of flux, a little bit of liquid flux on the board here. Dab a bit on with my trusty screwdriver. That'll make the new solder flow on when I get the chip centered. 
chip is tiny. Where is it there? Look at the size of that little sucker. In its little protective case. Pin one is going up in this corner here. You can see the little notch right down here on the board that indicates which way the chip goes in. The chip itself has a little dot to designate pin number one. And that's the direction it goes right there. It's going to set it in place here. This is a very small part, They're hard to maneuver. So we'll just use my little pick to kind of move it into place. And line it up where it needs to go. Kind of like that. And then we'll get our iron ready, and I'm just going to uh, see if I can center this off a bit more for you guys to see it a little better on the TV. There. I'm just going to hold this in place with my pick. Get it centered so the pins all line up, and then tack down one corner. And then I can double check my alignment before I solder the rest of them down. Okay, that's got the IC tech tack down in place. I can now inspect the other connections and make sure that they are properly lined up. And then tack the rest of the IC down. And then I can go back and put a little bit more solder just over top of each of the pins. Where am I looking here? There we are there. That's our IC. So I'm just going to go tack down this just, just a tad more solder. There we go, it's tacked in place. I'm just going to get out my inspection, uh, inspection scope now and just make sure there's no bridges or anything on it and then we'll reinstall it in the set. Okay, everything all checks out. Check, inspect all the connections on the board here to make sure that there are no shorts or bridges on our components that we've replaced. Everything's looking good here and everything's looking good on our transistors, our IGBTs which stands for Isolated Gate Bipolar Transistor, by the way, IGBTs. We changed those out, changed out the uh, drive IC. Let's get the board back in the set and uh, see what it does. I got one of the strangest phone calls today, you know. I check my messages and uh, I got a phone call from a client that I shot his wedding in 19, 1998 and he calls me up out of the blue and just asks by chance do I still have the tape because he'd like to get it on a copy on digital. So I went through my boxes of old tapes and, well, I keep everything. I got every, every uh, video production I ever did, I've kept the master tape. So 
I give him a phone call and let him know that I've got the tape and uh, he was pretty excited to hear that I still had the original tape. Okay, got the board mounted in. We're going to reconnect the ribbon cables. So the ribbon cable snaps in place like that. Then we've got the other two connectors. Connect the panel up. seated properly. There we go. And the power connector. And now the moment of truth. Get to fire this thing up and see if it works. What do you think? Shall we plug it in? See what happens? Okay, it's got power. Uh, okay, that's a good sign. And that's a better sign. Let's turn it around and see if we have a picture. Ah, fixed it. for watching. Bye.